Hey everybody, this is Todd with Industrial Comfort. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to bench bleed your master cylinder. Now, whether you're swapping one master cylinder for another, or you're just rebuilding the piston in your already existing master cylinder, a critical component is bench bleeding these things before you put them back into your vehicle. Now, the piston has a series of gaskets that have gaps between them, and that pushes the fluid back and forth between the two ports for your front and rear brakes. If you don't evacuate all the air bubbles, which are gonna be present in either a brand new master cylinder or once you've redone the piston in your old master cylinder, you're gonna be chasing bubbles and problematic brakes forever. So, today I'm gonna to show you how to bench bleed a master cylinder. The process is gonna be the same irrespective of what cylinder type you have, and I'll explain what parts you're gonna to need to get this done. Let's get started. To complete this project, we're gonna need a couple of tools. Now, the first thing that we're gonna need is a bench vise. Now, this is gonna allow us to keep the master cylinder steady as we actuate the piston to cycle the brake fluid through this master cylinder. The other thing you're gonna need, and this is really important, is the appropriate brake fluid for your braking system. So make sure that this matches as you don't want any corrosion within your brake lines or your master cylinder. And then finally, we are gonna need a tool to actuate the piston inside. So essentially you just wanna find something that's gonna have a rounded edge. So I'm using a socket driver here because I don't wanna mar the inside of the bore here. And then we're gonna use a universal master cylinder bleed kit. Um, these are pretty easy to get on Amazon or your advanced auto or any of those uh, auto parts stores and they're pretty cheap. So I think we're ready to start the bleed process. So the first thing that we're gonna do is remove the cover for the master cylinder and we are going to use the appropriate brake fluid for the brake system and we are gonna give this a fill and uh, we're gonna fill these most of the way up and <laughs> I actually do not have a ton of brake fluid left so I'm gonna have to run to the store and get some more. But next thing we're gonna do is take the clips that come with the kit and we're gonna put one clip on the front here and this is gonna be for the, to cycle the brake fluid in the front chamber here and then one for the back chamber. Okay, then we're gonna take the, um, actually before we do that, I'm gonna put the cover back onto the master cylinder. Oh my God, this thing is tight. Well, I'll leave that alone for now. And what I'm gonna do is remove these plugs and I am gonna screw in the corresponding um, hose adapters here that will allow us to recirculate the fluid. So you can see this is coming out, which is a good step or a good sign. And then I'll plug this one in. So you can see this one is starting to actually autofill. So we'll remove the cap here and put the clip in place. And then we're gonna attach the hose like that so that we can recirculate. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the front. Um, these hoses can probably be trimmed a little bit because they are pretty long. And the next thing we're gonna do is take this tool or whatever you're gonna use in this process and we're gonna actuate the piston, okay? and that will get the fluid, as you can see, moving through the brake system. So we're gonna keep doing this until we remove all the bubbles from the master cylinder. And I realized that the hoses should actually be going into the fluid, which I didn't do initially to make sure that we're getting proper recirculation. There we go. Just 
Just make sure that the hoses are fully submerged and we'll keep going through this recirculation until all the bubbles have been removed. And you can see we're getting there. All right, I think we're there. So what I'm gonna do now is remove the hoses and the plugs and we'll put some plug stops on the end to make sure that we don't get any leakage. We'll put the top back on and we'll reinstall. Now, one quick tip before we take everything apart is when you're actuating the piston, do not do it too aggressively. Just take nice, slow, even strokes. As when you do it too quickly, it agitates things and creates air pockets and you'll get some bubbles in here. So just take your time, go nice and slow. And what we're gonna do now is uh, remove the hoses and the corresponding clips. And what I'm gonna do now is put the cover back on. And this is like unbelievably tight. I don't, I'm actually gonna put some fluid on the, see if I can lubricate it a little bit. There we go. I mean, this is crazy how tight this is. I, okay. With that done, what I'm now gonna do is quickly unscrew these. Now, I'm, I'm hopeful that this will create a vacuum effect, and I'm just gonna reuse the original plugs that this came with as I transfer it back to the vehicle. So, we'll unscrew this and insert the plug, and then we'll do the same thing on this side. And I'll bring back to the truck. With the bleed now complete, I'm just going to go ahead and top off these two chambers, again using the appropriate fluid for this brake system. I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch of space up top. And that's all there is to it. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.